Hi, I'm Bruce Lipton. I'd like to welcome you to this free video series on how beliefs shape your biology. Today's lesson will be on the nature of the myth of genes. The belief that genes control your life turns out to be completely false. The reason why this is so important for you to know is that you have been programmed essentially with the belief that genes control all the characteristics of your life. And why this new science is very important for your health and your life is that it reveals that your mind and your consciousness and how you see the world is really what determines your genetics and your biology. Very interestingly, in my early research, one of the things I did was remove the nucleus from a cell, a process called enucleation. The significance is that the nucleus contains almost all the DNA, the genes, within a cell. What I found is when the genes were removed from the cell, the cell didn't die, as one might expect, but the cells continued to live on for three or more months and expressing very complex behaviors and functions, which is a very interesting concept when you understand that the belief was that genes were controlling all aspects of the cell's life and were the equivalent of the cell's brain. The research I was working on at the University of Wisconsin profoundly changed my life. That research involved cloning stem cells. What I would do is take one single stem cell, the equivalent of an embryonic cell, put it in a petri dish all by itself. The cell would divide every 10 to 12 hours, so at first there was one, and then two, four, eight, 16, and pretty soon I had about 50,000 cells in the petri dish. The most important understanding about this is that all the cells were genetically identical because they came from the same parent cell. But the real experiment that changed my mind was when I took these cells, genetically identical cells, and split them up into three different petri dishes. And what I did was change the culture medium. That's the environment in which cells live. So I changed the culture medium with slight chemical changes between the three dishes so each of the dishes had a different environment. What was interesting was that in one dish, the cells form muscle. In the second environment, the cells form bone. And in a third environment, the cells form fat cells. And you say, well, what's the significance of that? And I tell you, this is what it is. Remember, all the cells were genetically identical. So if you ask what might be the most profound question, what controls the fate of the cells? The answer was not genetics. The only difference in all of the three cultures was the composition of the culture medium, the environment. This led me into a whole new insight about how environmental signals are actually selecting and controlling gene expression. Well, this was back in the early 1970s. I was sort of a loner out there at the time because at that time, science was so involved with genetics that all research was focusing toward the role of genes in controlling our lives. What's most interesting is as I started to talk to my colleagues about this new research about how the environment was controlling the genes, they pretty much let it go as what they perceived as an artifact or something strange about the culture. And this really upset me to a large degree because the experiments were repeatable over and over again every day. Well, I understand the issue very clearly now is because I was way ahead of the game. I was 20 or more years before the advent of a new modality of science called epigenetics. And if you haven't heard of epigenetics, this is the most important new science in the world today. It is going to create a revolution that will change civilization completely. The significance of epigenetics is environmental signals are what control our genes. And you say, well, what's the significance of that? And I go, well, very simply this. If genes control your life, then by definition, you're a victim of your heredity. Whatever is running in your family is likely to appear in your life as well. Now that we understand the nature of environmental signals controlling genes, it changes everything for this reason. You are the one that can control the environment. Therefore, you end up being the master of your genes because you are the one that can change your beliefs and attitudes and visions of the world. And those changes in the mind actually lead to the chemical changes in the blood, which ultimately control our genetics. So we have this belief that genes control our lives and genes are responsible for our diseases. This is completely false. As a matter of fact, what's really interesting when people talk about a gene turning on and a gene turning off, there's a belief that genes actually made decisions. Interestingly, there's a quote I often use from 1990, 20 years after my research, talking about the new science then in 1990. The quote goes something like this. It says, when a gene product is needed, a signal from its environment, not an emergent property of the gene, controls the activity of that gene. 
Well, for me, this was a very exciting moment in my life. After 20 years of trying to talk scientists into the understanding how environment was actually controlling the genes, it has now finally come into the mainstream belief of conventional science. For me, this is exciting to tell you about because most of you have had the belief that genes turn on and off. And what I really just want to emphasize to you is that a gene is essentially just a blueprint. A gene is a blueprint to make the proteins, which are the building blocks of the body. Surely, yes, the proteins give us our physical characteristics and our behavioral characteristics, but it's not really controlled by the genes. The genes just make the parts. What controls us is our thought, our belief, and our attitude. How we think is actually turned into chemistry that goes through the body and controls the activity of our genes. So if you change your thoughts, you actually change your biology. And today, this is the leading edge of science, epigenetics, how your beliefs actually control your life. The belief that genes are actually still controlling our lives turns out to be a false understanding for this reason, because we have blamed genes for the illnesses and diseases that we have on this planet. Interesting fact, less than 1% of disease is actually connected to genetics. This is significant because it says, then where is the other 90 so percent of disease coming from? And this is actually now understood to be coming from the way we live, our lifestyle, which in turn is affecting our genetic readout and actually is the cause of disease. The biggest cause of disease actually has nothing to do with genetics, but is due to stress. Stress is what can lead to a change in the genetic readout. Stress via epigenetic mechanisms can take a normal gene and turn it into a mutant gene or a cancer gene and express it as a disease. So. When we understand this, we start to say, rather than looking for the pharmaceutical industry to heal us from our diseases, we must recognize that the primary source of our problem is our own lives and how we are living it in a stressful world. When you understand the nature of this, you are free to change the character of your life, and in so doing, you take control and manage your own biology. To give you a little scientific insight into the story of epigenetics, let me tell you about the work of Dean Ornish, an internist who does research at the University of San Francisco. Dean was working with prostate cancer patients, and he split his patients into two groups. One group received the conventional treatment with pharmaceutical drugs, but the second group, for a 90-day period, didn't use any drugs at all. But what Dean did was show them how to have a better lifestyle. He changed their diet. He taught them stress reduction techniques, and he also taught them how to meditate. It's very interesting because when they read the genetic readout of the two groups before the start of the experiment and then compared their gene readout at the end of 90 days, what did they find? 500 genes changed just by changing lifestyle, by changing that diet and removing stress. And most of the genes that changed were genes that were associated with the prostate cancer. What this really revealed was how lifestyle profoundly can change the genetic readout. And all of a sudden we say, yes, this is the nature of epigenetics. Your life is controlling your genes. Your genes are not controlling you. In the next video, we're going to extend this information and talk about not the myth of genes, but the myth of breast cancer. Because so many people have the belief that having the breast cancer gene will actually cause the cancer. And we're going to talk about how that's not really true. And if you're really interested in any of the topics that we're talking about, I invite you, please, write in and give us your comments so that we can respond to them. So I want to thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.